Hey, what's up? I've got some more lore content for you guys. With the tournament right around the corner and the end of the rank season coming up, I thought it'd be a good time to cover the three best decks of each archetype so that you have a last minute climbing deck, or maybe you see something that you'd like to try for the first time. Whatever you're looking for, there will definitely be something for you. So I wanted to finish up this series with a bang and give you guys some combo decks. Before I get into the decks, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. Our journey to 10k subs is still going strong, and I need all the support I can get, so it'd be awesome if you joined. This is the only channel where you can get my specific style of content and in-depth guides, so you won't regret subbing. I also stream on Twitch often, so check me out over there if you're looking for live gameplay of someone who's hit high master tier every season, and even hit rank 1 in NA a while back. I'm trying to go for a Twitch partner push in the next couple of months, so it would mean a lot to have you stop by. Each and every person in chat goes a long way. With that, I hope you enjoy these deck rundowns. So we are definitely starting off with a bang and we are talking about Azir Aurelia. With a win rate of 52.29% and a play rate of nearly 3%, this deck has come out of nowhere as soon as the Aurelia buff happened and people are playing it non-stop. I've seen this deck quite a lot recently, I piloted it myself, used it to hit high master tier this season on two different accounts, hitting top 200 players and top 100 players. I also made an in-depth guide on Azir Aurelia very recently if you want to check that out. So we're going to quickly be going through the numbers and a showcase game. It is really, really terrifying. I'm showcasing my specific version of the list though, because this is the one that works the best for me. And it's also the one that has gotten a lot of praise from viewers and commenters uh, coming in saying, hey, this deck is different than everyone else and I like it. This one is definitely outperforming. So I take a lot of pride in that and want to showcase that for you guys yet again. So we have triple Rite of Calling, triple Ancient Prep, Dune Keeper, Dune Keeper Rite of Calling, really cool combo to see your champions more because this is a very champion reliant deck to get your combo pieces going uh so being able to search them consistently is super nice we're just basically turboing out the win con so this is a zero aurelia turbo we have a couple shape stone for uh protection and to help trade up especially trade the sand soldiers up into things that we don't want there anymore sparring student really really strong a couple lead and follow ribbon dancer for combo two twin disciplines for protection and trade up of course our powerhouse champions that are played together and provide infinite amounts of pressure Three Defiant Dance to pop things back to the opponent's hand that are problematic, and Blade Dance. Two Field Musicians because this card is absolutely incredible. I like to run it at two, not three, because it can get kind of bricky uh, running it at three if you draw multiple, but having one is really, really nice. Helps you push even more into the mid and late game. Helps get your resources up. Uh, helps keep you ahead. Two Homecoming to mess with the opponent's board, and three Blossoming Blade as the final combo piece to help push. Uh, Azir pressure with Dice or himself and to help level Aurelia and also get her level up attacks in. So with that, that's the end of the deck rundown. I know super quick. Again, check out my full in-depth guide if you want to see um, why each of the cards are in here, what they're trying to do, and some of their synergies together. With that, let's get into the showcase game. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. Alright, and for the showcase game, we got Winding Light Midrange with the Victor Zoe Vi. Really powerful deck. I like this deck a lot. It's very similar to the Aphelios one that I play. So we're going to pitch lead and follow, keep these three. Kind of like this opener. Oh, nice. We have Ribbon Dancer for some Blade Dancing in the mid game too. Probably turn four if we don't get into the Aurelia early. Which is kind of fine. Aurelia instantly dies to like Mystic Shot and stuff anyways without protection, but Azir, he's a little bit stickier with his 5 HP. I bet early Mystics might go to my Sparring Student as well because he can ramp up and get very powerful. Ooh, Double Ribbon Dancer, holy. Our turn 4 is absolutely disgusting by the way. Sparring. You know what? I'm down to open attack. Because they could be on like Mountain Goat and other stuff like that for turn two. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's open attack. We threaten Zoe, we get an Aurelia level up point. I'm not going to play Emperor Dice. You want okay, we actually get the Zoe. Yo, I'm down. I'm down to take a Zoe. Yeah, because I don't want them to play Mountain Goat or something and then I can't even attack. Yeah, or Boomba Boon, exactly. I'd rather get the Aurelia level up point when I can. Oh, okay, wait. We don't even need Aurelia. This is so much blade dancing. 
All right. Yep. Hey, Ooh. Sorry. Got a bit of moon rock for you. Okay. Um, yeah. Just a little something I like to call fun. Sure. You you got it. That's crazy. <laughs> cool. That is an insane opener by them. I guess I'm taking 11 because I don't want to block a 0 to 3 one. I could block oh, one of the 2-2s. Two I only lose a 0 to get excited. Nah. Not having it. Alright, time to ribbon dance. Bam. All in the shoulders. And then we do it again. You don't scare me. You can't stop me. Spending the entire turn on Paristus. You got it. Let's go, Ribbon Dancer number two. And Azir will level off of the next attack. Which will be swinging with just these two. I don't want to injure my Azir. Leveled a zero on four. That's quite fast. Uh, lighten up. You can't stop me. Alright. Yo, what up, Aurelia? Yo, drop that Victor or something. My spirit ah, open attack. Alright. Walk here. Creature. And then Blossoming Blade. My steps in my heart is air. Your Emperor commands. Hmm? Ooh, wow. We just get all the damage. We have leveled Aurelia, too. Yeah, they have to find a way to kill me. Looks like it's gonna be Financier into, like, Shock Blast, maybe? That does get them there. Shock Blast or True Shot Barrage. Both can kill me. And there's not a lot I can do about it. Thermal beam for two. Thank you. Um, okay. That means it has to be shock blast. They can't true shot barrage anymore. They did not float any mana. We dance to the drums of war, and all our hearts beat as one. Where they fall, freedom grows. We level the rally out here, get the attune, so now we can do duet and dancer this turn. Hopefully they did not uh, manifest a shock blast. Ah, nothing, let's go! They have nothing. They've missed their beat. Alright, now we have a very hated deck. We have Lissandra Talia Thralls with a win rate of 55.62% and a play rate of basically 4%. This deck is an absolute menace. It has the highest combined win rate and play rate on the ladder. So yeah, it's uh, pretty terrifying. What it wants to do is develop these things called Thralls and then count them down to get these really big 8-8 overwhelmed dudes. All right, So you basically can get them down to 4 and play... 
Thanes of Time instant sentry and pop them immediately. And there's other combos and stuff you can do. You can copy them when they're low and then get Talia for double thralls and crazy things like that. So we're running triple thrall. Imagine possibilities to advance them one countdown. Three sisters for flash freeze. Uh, sometimes in tomb, fear of the north come up as well. Clockwork curator and harbinger to also count them down or create more thralls. Time in the bottle, count them down. A kindly tavern keeper for heal and aggro matchup. Lissandra, because she creates uh, thralls as well and gives you watcher win con sometimes against really slow uh, decks. Blighted Ravine uh, for control so that you can deal with aggro a little bit. Ride Negation because it's Shreema Denai, might as well run it. Dracoon Inquisitor to uh, speed up the countdown and also summon a thrall. Talia to copy thralls, harsh winds for Frostbite to slow down uh, the opponent. Sands of Time, again, really, really good to get the instant sentry. Craziest card in the deck, this one right here. And then two buried in ice to really slow down the opponents and that's pretty much it it's uh very combo oriented you have to see very specific cards get some thralls count them down do really big uh damage pushes it's quite scary so let's get into the showcase game all right we have thralls versus zombie and nivia now this is actually a matchup we don't mind too much right negation is really good against uh harrowing but we want to pitch that save it for later we basically just want to see thralls and sands of time I'm down to keep the Lissandra as well. Oh my god, we got a Thrall on one. That's huge. Okay, so we can do Thrall, count it down. Lissandra on three. Huge dub. Alright, slam that. And imagine possibilities to advance it one more. Alright. It's a pretty crazy hand. If we don't win, Zombie Nivea is the best deck in the game. That's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and Lissandra. All things grow cold. We might be able to do some really cheeky things as well. Like get maybe three thralls or something. Avalanche. That's a pretty early avalanche. You should do that post-combat. Because I was going to swing. You block my Lissandra first, right? That's all right. Let's get that damage in. Bonk. Um, I don't really have anything I want to do this turn. I could just Tavern Keeper up the Lissandra. Or I could float for Sands of Time. Um, I'm kind of down. Just heal. What will you have? On attack, let me see. Seven? I could have double thralls. Yep. Um, another one? Uh, let's do advance. Then we can have a thrall this turn, and then second thrall uh, next turn. Vengeance. That's a really big vengeance commitment. Let's watch this. Now we do imagine possibilities at focus speed. Advance your landmarks one round. That is an 8-8 with overwhelm on attack 5 at Let's focus speed. We also get to play mana efficient by floating 3 going into next turn, so it's kind of just a dub. Light the signal at deal a quick 10. Okay, we don't even need to use Sands of Time. Forever uh, let's just entomb that. No biggie. Then we time in the bottle and win on open. Isn't that disgusting? Look at this. How is this fair? Time in the bottle. Uh, eh. Eh. Grab the Inquisitor. Not like it really matters, but yeah. Round start. Yeah, they, they already know. Up. Up. What you got? Oh, they're holding on for dear life. Heal. Heal up. Oh. Still dead. Bam, bam. And for the final deck, we have Nami Twisted Fate. 
So it has a win rate of 49.15% and a play rate of 2.32%. This is the only deck in the entire series that I'm covering that has sub 50% win rate. The reason why I'm covering it though is because it is really hard to pilot. That's why its win rate is so low. It actually is a super good deck. It's quite consistent. It just has a couple bad matchups that it loses to really hard and it's difficult. But what it wants to do is set up uh, Nami level and then Shelly and other elusive uh units and then aoe buff them all for really big finishes it's actually quite fun uh, i took a few weeks to learn the deck a little bit ago so we're going to cover it right now fading memories pretty cool to hit um let's see what's it called wiggly burblefish when it's already fully discounted so you get even more of them um shadow owls tailstones this is two spells for basically two mana so that gets you nami procs and it also gives you shelly procs right that way you get super wide board, and they're all getting buffed. Answered Prayer for a unit, four creatures, Glimpse Beyond, Vile Feast, Double Trouble, Nami, Tentacle Smash, Twisted Fate, Zap, Eye of Nakakabotos for draw, um, Shelly, Vengeance, Wiggly Burble Fish, and Harrowing to round it out, just in case you get super late game. Harrowing can bring back all your stuff and help one final push. So it's really, really interesting trying to level Nami when you should play her, when you should play Twisted Fate, when you which like which card you should use, when you can go for leveling him because it's actually possible to level TF in this deck. It's quite easy actually with the Glimpse, uh, Zap, I, uh, it's like something else too. You you can just like kind of pop off with him, right? So there's a lot of difficult decision making. If you like that style of deck, I highly recommend giving this one a try. So let's get into the showcase game and see what we can do. All right, so we got deep. Uh, deep is okay for us because we want to get into the late game. That's fine. Tentacle smash for Sea Scarab. We probably could keep Glimpse. We don't want to keep Purple Fish. We can draw into that. Uh, glimpse for their removal. Sure. Ah, uh, double Tentacle Smash. All right, their Sea Scarabs are not living. And double Twisted Fate as well. It's kind of cool. We got a poker hand, right? Two pairs. Alright, drag on one. No biggie. Oh, okay. Now that, that's weird. Triple Twisted Fate. What if we turbo level him? With like pick a card galore. Come on, let me see the Sea Scarab. I know you have it. No? Weird. Um, I'm down to just Vile Feast then. That still gives us Tentacle Smash for the turn. Uh, heals us, gives us a unit. That's like the perfect top deck. That's exactly what I want to do this turn. Pass. Oh, you know we can play Tentacle Smash as just a unit, right? Uh, not that I'm going to. Let's just attack. But we can. That's a really fun fact, actually. Hey, yo, Slaughter Docks off the top. That's kind of scary. Uh, we can pass. Even warned. Uh, yeah, we can just gold card that. They are turbo deep. Gold. Never lost a fair game. Did they hit salvage, salvage. Okay, they're out of salvages then. Yeah, because they hit one with drag earlier. Dead in their tracks. When you're fighting deep, it's really important to click the scroll over here and check what they're tossing. That way, you know what to play around. Blur. All right. Let's do pick a card, one of the tentacle smashes. Yeah, we're not going to need two anymore. We could probably also take an open attack, but I want to draw, try to get this TF up here. Yeah, let's go ahead and open attack. We can play Zap after, which is another draw card, by the way. We can very realistically play around TF level as long as he doesn't get Devour the Depths right now. Keep up, keep up. I really want to play this. We can put it back in our deck with the other pick a card. Huh. Let him think it's luck. Okay, we're kind of popping off this TF. I don't know what's going on here. Jettison too? Damn, okay. They're almost deep already. Three away. We 
Okay, we can level TF at burst speed. That's huge. Blood and guts, golden glory. Let's go ahead and do it as well. Wow. This is cool. This is the first time I've done this in this deck. But I said in the profile, we can reasonably level him. Uh, let's also do... Elstone and grab Arc. Yep. That gives us blue card. Pass. That also means if we play the Mark, we get red card. So Jaw Hunters cannot kill Twisted Bait. Still trying though, which is just kind of cute. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Do that. Um. Do I need a mark though? I'm better off file feasting, just letting mark go away. I don't want to do pick a card. I my hand, man, my hand, so full. What would I even mark? Maybe the tentacle. Maybe this. Mark spider. Kind of cool. It makes red kill it. I'm down. Try that. I'm a person. Whip out the red card. Bonk, bonk. They're deep. And also end with a purple fish. Gold card. Okay, so this is not how the deck is supposed to pan out, but it's kind of cool. I'm kind of like popping off. Beast below? Sure. Let's just do the Shelly then. What you got? Devour? That's fine. It's basically just a vanilla unit on summon. Shelly. Yeah, it gives us blue. Uh, we have two spells. That gets us to gold and also a Shelly proc. Eyes open. Let's see what we draw. Answered prayer. Okay. Yeah, you've had enough of my TF, huh? Um. Why don't we do glimpse and also? What if we did Bile? Could we ever get this thing down to not killing TF? No, we can't. Mm. I'm kind of fine with just drawing cards then. Gotta trust your instincts. Then we can play Core Creatures. Get the buff on that. Alright. Let's do that then. We don't need Something to get to gold, because we have elusives. Fading, fading. Okay, okay, this is not fair. Uh, cool creatures. Go. <laughs> then Vile Feast. And it doesn't really matter. Just want to get the spell off for the Shelly proc. Then we can. Fading. Play this over the spider. And fading again. Holy moly. Four, four, eight, 11, 14. Hmm. I guess that's just kind of good. We don't need to swing at these then. You know what's crazy is there may have been a lethal somewhere, depending on order. I mean, I don't think so, but. Hey, yo. Really scary. Another burble. You didn't even target my Shelly. Uh, let's go ahead and absorb soul that. Because why not? Let's see what else we got. 
I guess double trouble to refill the board. Gives us some chump blockers to work with. See, this is where, like, it's just kind of getting out of control. Yeah, random blockers. Um, 5-5 five, five here. That kills. 4-6. Uh, doesn't live, so what else do we want to deal with damage to? This guy. And this is just fine. And then we have purple fish that's not ephemeral. Proud. Yeah, <laughs> it's just kind of ridiculous. Next time we swing for like 20 elusive damage. So the whole point is to be doing that, but also have Nami on the board buffing uh, alongside the uh, Fleet Admiral Shelly. So you can kind of see how that gets out of control. But there's a lot of elusive shenanigans going on, so if you like this playstyle, definitely give it a try. And that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out since I'm still trying to grow. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, and gameplay highlights in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!